Hi guys, I found the error on the uh, direction of chronicity in the previous video of April 25th, 2022, just yesterday. So I made a correction. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, so uh, this is the first video explaining chronicity and the price tier. Contents will be from side forces to summary. Here I have a quiz for you. Uh, what is the correct description about the chronicity? Number one, chronicity is not persistent. It disappears soon. Number two, residual lateral force due to hysteresis is persistent problem. It happens all the way uh, when the vehicle runs straight ahead. Number three, price tier is persistent. It continuously uh, makes the driver fatiguing and annoying uh, when the vehicle runs straight ahead. I explained the cornering force with the side strip angle in the curved pass and the camber thrust without the side strip angle due to wheel camber angle. And I also ex explained cross wind and the road condition uh, due to camber, banked road, and the road surface unevenness in, in the video number E1020. From now on, I will explain the lateral force produced by minor residual forces. Uh, there will be five to six consecutive videos related to this topic. Uh, if the steering wheel is in the perfectly neutral position and there is no camber on the rebel road, the vehicle must go straight ahead. But uh, this doesn't happen in the real world. Uh, main reasons are hysteresis, chronicity, and the price tier. Hysteresis and chronicity can be easily understood, uh, but price tier is not easy to, uh, to be understood uh, from the scratch. You need some prior knowledge on the composite lamina theory, basic matrix operation theory, uh, cross-coupled stiffness, and so on. Unfortunately, I cannot explain all, all, all the details in my videos uh, because there are tons of contents related to these topics. I will explain just briefly all those in the very simple form and introduce the reference material uh, for your deeper study. Before getting into the main topic, uh, let's be familiar with uh, the terminology symmetry and asymmetry. The left graph has point symmetry with respect to the origin here, uh, but the two of right graphs are asymmetry uh, with respect to origin. Uh, theoretically, a uh, side strip angle and the camber angle must be zero. Uh, when the car with the wheel camber zero, uh, drives straight ahead on the rebel road. But this is not always true in reality, as I said in the previous slide. As you can see, a lateral force Fy curve and the self-aligning moment Mz curve uh, don't pass through the zero origin in reality. Uh, the main reasons for this are chronicity and the price tier, uh, which will be discussed from now on. Main reasons for the asymmetry can be poured into two categories, temporary and persistent asymmetry. Temporary asymmetry comes from hysteresis, and the persistent asymmetry comes from chronicity and the price tier. Persistent asymmetry is our main topic. Uh, there are two main causes. Uh, first one is a lack of manufacturing quality. Uh, when the longitudinal center line of tire belts are not placed at that center of entire tire, tire's behavior looks like cone rolling, shown in the previous video from E1024 to 1026 
related to camber. We call this conistic or pseudo camber. It doesn't produce the side slip angle like a camber and heavily dependent on belt geometry. Second one is a lack of design accuracy. Uh, when the stiffness of laminated belts are not mirror symmetry with respect to their midplane, tire behavior uh, looks like being given steering input. We call this ply steer or pseudo, cam uh, pseudo steer. It produces the side slip angle although its size is small and heavily dependent on uh, belt stiffness symmetry. All the problems uh, make the driver turn the steering wheel for the correction. Hysteresis uh, soon disappeared, but conicity and the ply steer uh, harmed the steering accuracy to keep the straight path all the way uh, during the driving the car. That is very fatiguing and annoying. Let's start our discussion with hysteresis. Uh, when you hold the steering wheel at the straight ahead position, uh, right after the end of a vehicle turning, a uh, small residual force remains in the tires even after the vehicle completes its turn as described in the picture. In the left graph, the origin is the starting point for cornering and the lateral deformation of tire, uh, which are colored by red in the hysteresis graph and the top view of vehicle movement. It reaches the maximum lateral force colored by violet and the completes its turn as colored by green. Uh, but still it has small residual force and displacement uh, due to that force. Uh, thus, its direction is not straight ahead uh, due to that uh, lateral force. At this situation, driver can feel the lack of the steering precision and try to continuously correct the vehicle for moving straight ahead. Driver can feel the lack of steering precision. This doesn't happen uh, when driving stra straight ahead, uh, but uh, thus in cornering. Now, here we have the main topic, the persistent asymmetry. I will explain the introductory part of conicity and the ply steer. Uh, from the next video, I will explain the root cause of conicity and then composite lamina theory, stiffness matrix, cross-coupled stiffness related to the main reasons of ply steer, and finally uh, their interaction with the vehicle pulling and drift uh, through the test results. These two pictures are shown in the previous videos related to the camber and the side slip angle. The same thing exactly happened in the tire contact patch for both conicity and the ply steer uh, respectively. Conicity looks like camber and the ply steer looks like lateral force due to side slip angle. Considering the tire structure, conicity and the ply steer are likely produced in radial ply tire than in the cross ply tire. The answer to the quiz is number three. Ply steer is persistent. It continuously makes the driver fatiguing and annoying uh, when the vehicle runs straight ahead. Here we have a summary. Because of conicity and the ply steer, a lateral force and the self aligning moment have non zero values. Even when the car uh, drives straight ahead on the level road, conicity looks like a camber and the ply steer looks like a lateral force uh, due to side slip angle. 
The size of quantity is determined by the offset quantities of center lines of belts away from the longitudinal center line of the entire tire. Pleistier relies on stiffness symmetry with respect to the conferential midplane. If you watch the previous videos, you can easily understand upcoming videos. In the previous video, E1026, I explained the camber moment produced by camber arm and the camber trail related to the normal and the shear stress distributions of the tire contact patch. Recently, I explained the different performance uh, depending on the tire types uh, for the camber of road unevenness. The next video will be quantity and the ply steer part 2. Uh, you can catch the brand new video by free subscription. So, what are you waiting for? See you in the next video. Goodbye, guys.